All right. Let's see if we will do a little live action this evening on this Friday night. Let's see. Look for a few people to pop in here. Get situated here. What's up, Will? Cameron, Phil. I know I'd talked to a few others and said I may, may or may not do this and had a little bit of time to goof off and play around. No real topic, kind of a potluck thing. I know the thumbnail probably says something else, but didn't have time to change it. So, um, what's up, Jay? So, so we get a few people. This will take. Still haven't had time to go through and do all the cool stuff in OBS yet, and walk through and do the stuff on Twitch and everything yet. But we'll get eventually get there. So, and yeah, evening for some and morning for some. I'm not sure of all the different time zones, but. Hey, it'll work out for some people, and I couldn't do one during the day today because I was working, so, but, uh, let's see, there's one thing I wanted to do, there was a couple people asking, let's see if I can get it here, which I know I wouldn't be able to do a full video on it. Let me see if I can pull up my other camera here. Uh, three o'clock in the morning, huh? Let's see. And let me pull up the... Yep, same here, Mark, Central Time. So kids are in bed and, or at least should be in bed. So hopefully, Four-year-old won't become popping in, but so a couple things. Let's see if we can do this with at the same time. <clears throat> I got a little stretch here. If someone sent me the, I don't know how to pronounce it right. The it would be fate. Or fight, however you want to say it. I guess I would want to say it fate. F E I T, that fate electric bulb. And it's a pretty cool bulb. It's it's actually got five channels on it. Um, it's got RGB, cool white, and warm white on it. Fiat. I don't know, we can all we can always sit there and debate back and forth all the different accents and different languages, right? Um I know it's spelled F-E-I-T, so I, I keep wanting to spell it F-I-E-T, but um, it's a cool little bulb, and it uses the same type driver. I know we've, t we've talked about these, the mercury bulbs, and I know here in the U.S. you can get those in, like, Walmart and stuff. I think, like, the parent company was Genie, I believe, what some people were saying. I think they were getting those these bulbs with, like, a Genie uh as the parent company in like, I believe Canada or something. Um, but I saw someone using them in, they, were, they used it in ESP home, but the problem was there's, there, the driver on it is a SM, it's like a SM16716 or something like that. And, but they came up with two lights because the way this one works is the RGB is on that LED controller. Let's see if we can put this lamp here so we can kind of see it. Let's see. Give me one second. We can position this a little bit better without blowing out the lens, right?
There we go. Seen him in Kmart in Australia for 15. So Hugh, you you flashed it inside into ESP Home. I know it does support uh, it does support it. Were you able to get the the this bolt the the Mercury ones only have a warm white, and it's on a PWM channel. Let's see ESP Home Lib. Let me pull this over to the other screen and pull this up at the same time. Get my screen here so we won't be covering things up. And we'll zoom this in a little bit. So it's, it was in, you said it was in the fast. Let's see, it's fast lead. I remember someone seeing it. It was, let's see, where was it at? SM under SPI, I believe. Because here it is right here, the SM16716. Yeah, okay, it did come up as two lights. I wonder if there's a way, we have to talk with with, uh, with Odo, if I, so I'm saying I'm saying Odo or Otto, and yeah, don't pick on me because I can't pronounce anything, right? Um, so inside, but inside Taz Moto, I know they do actually support it. Uh, yeah, those, the, the Dr. Jeff, those feet are, fight, I said feet. We'll call it, we'll call it the feet light, right? We'll just rock and roll with that. Um, the, the fight, that one, you can uh, flash it with the two-year convert. And I did hear a rumor from, a, from I think it was the same person, it was in Discord and on the Facebook site, saying that if they upgraded uh, the, to two-year, 1.05, the, uh, the 1.05 was not going to let you do two-year convert anymore. So definitely, I haven't been able to substantiate that, and I will probably on Sunday. And I think I can, I have the bin file to a switch that I had, and I'll be able to uh, flash it back once I solder into it. And I wanted to up, see if they had an upgrade for it and then try to do it to your convert. Um, so, but anyway, just if you're doing anything with to your convert, of course, don't even pair it just with the Smart Life app. Just go ahead and uh, uh, just do the to your convert. Those, I saw the, the fit, look, I can't even pronounce it, the fight ones on, on Amazon, I believe. And I heard they were saying they were in at Costco as well. Um, let's see. It was Fight Electric. Let's see. Text. Let's see. So the they were a little, they're a little more on the pricier side, but um, they, they were, I think they, they were to get them locally, I believe. Yeah. See that somebody get them at Costco and I haven't seen them at my home Depot and uh, I don't have a Menards. So, but maybe they're a little cheaper locally than from the, uh, from Amazon or whatever. Um, so I'm sure you can get them in several places. And of course the Mer the mercury bulbs, I saw those at Walmart. So, um, but I just flashed them straight with two-year convert. And what you do is just do the, turn them on. And then I think it's like, I do it two or three times. You like on, off, on, off, on, off, and on. And then it'll start, I give it a couple seconds. And then it'll start blinking real fast. Some of them come up straight out of the box as in pairing mode. Um, yeah, they... It, I don't believe it says they're two year ones, but are they actually using the two year uh, the two year back in? So you can use the uh, two year convert and convert the bulbs over. So, um, but as I found, like as, as Hugh was saying, there's someone else was also saying the same thing. You can use them with ESP Home, and 
because the driver that is in the Mercury and the uh, Fate ones or the SM16716, that does just the red, green, and blue. And the PWM does the actual warm white and cool white. So now what they've done in Tasmodo is, if y'all can see this one without, I mean, if I don't cover it up here, let's see. Now see, I'm using the, temp, the, the, the template on this one. If you're not familiar with the templates, if, let me drag this out the way here a second. We don't need this as big, right? So if you're not familiar with the, uh, with the templates, this is uh, Black Adders. We covered this in kind of one of the other live stream. You do need to be on one of the later development versions for this, also for this SM16716 driver for both of these bulbs. Uh, and if you're not familiar with doing the, um, with getting the development software, if you go to the Tasmodo uh, Git GitHub and scroll down and look in the development section and then if you go to hack, hackbox.org, go to Tasmoda, and there's the core 2.3 and the core 2.5, and these are the core 2.4.2. You will need, these are built, I believe, hourly, and you, you can flash these uh, straight over through OTA. Well, okay, three out of five star show. Um, so <clears throat> you can flash those OTA. I know we covered this before, but I know some people, a lot of people ask like, what's the core versions? Is the core versions much like the kind of like the Windows? Think of it kind of like the like Windows 7, Windows 10 version, kind of like the base operating system. And then think of Tasmodo as the application version. And some people have had issues with MQTT disconnects on 2.4.2, which is the, the regular builds of 6.41 and later. And including myself, I've had a lot of issues with MQ, MQTT, I'm getting tongue-tied this, this evening, disconnects. And a lot of people, the two, core 2.50 builds will fix that. Now, some people still have issues, which I've had on some devices, and I've went to core 2.3.0 on those devices. But those are all right here if you just click and you can go find the different cores but you will need to flash one of these and you may need to do the two-step where you get to flash the minimal because these are the larger size. You'll flash the minimal and then come flash uh, the Sonoff uh, like classic or whatnot. And one big key, and I know I've gone over this before, um, and I'll catch up here in a second in the chat, is when a bulb, because you bulb, you don't have a button, make sure and do a Wi-Fi config too. I did compile a bin and put instructions in the Tuya convert video of a bin file, because I know some people have had issues with uh, like the putting in the Wi-Fi passwords and the SSID. Uh, if you look in the description of my Tuya convert video, there's instructions along with the link to the bin file that's pre-compiled of uh, 6.4 but the big key is Wi-Fi manager is default. And so if you mess up on the SSID or you mess up on the password and it won't connect to, or you have a password that has unsupported characters that Arduino doesn't like, then it won't, it'll try a couple times on Wi-Fi and then it'll go back into access point mode. So you won't be, you know, a lot of the bricking of the plugs and bulbs, uh, if you use that bin file and it there's instructions on how to copy that over to your raspberry pi when you're doing the to your convert and you do need to send there's a different command towards the bottom of the to your convert so the very last one it says hey copy and paste this for doing the third party bin file and you'll send that one straight over which i highly recommend because then that way you're not going to break anything due to a bad wi-fi uh password um so once you flash the, uh, you can, and once you get over using the GUI and get to like 6.4, I think it's 120 right now, is if you go into, 
which makes it really easy. If you go to the tent, go to Black Adder's templates, and here's the link. Uh, let's see, make sure and catch up. I used to you and what they had in their flash, then Tasmo men and basic. Yep, you remember which video you covered? I'm not sure what you're asking, Jason. Which link? Can't see it. Okay, I just copied it there. Okay. Um, now, Idaho Joe, I like doing both uh, in some some places. Uh, like a, uh, I have in my bathroom is, I do have a bulb that actually running uh, ESP Home on it, and I have it off a of Node Red that uh, there's, there's actually I have a Sonoff Dual in the wall that does my over the sink light and also controls my vent based on humidity in there and turns on the vent when the shower is coming on and turns it back off and the humidity comes back down. But also there's a bulb in the vent and I kick that off through motion. Well, in the morning when it's, I'm getting up at 5 a.m. in the morning, the motion kicks off. I have it turned to a very warm light that's very, very dim. And it's like, like dim almost where you can't hardly see your hand in front of your face, which is what I'm wanting in the morning. So I could, it's a little hard to do that with a dimmer, but I do agree with you. I don't really like the smart bulbs be, where you have to have the switch on. So this, this bulb is hardwired where there's power on all the time. And it, I still have a button on the wall where I can turn it back on and off. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. Um, another way to do that is if, um, which I've done as well, is take just a regular smart switch, like say a Martin Jerry switch, one of those KU LED switches, and then you can do a rule in there and that switch actually won't do any switching and you'll just be sending MQTT messages to your bulbs and you can turn your bulbs on and off that way and it works just like a regular light switch. Um, yeah, I did it, Dr. Jeff, I did it with Node Red. If we got time, remind me and I can go look through there um, how I kind of did that humidity. Um, so back in, in, if you look in Black Adder's, uh, templates, you can find he ha he has, there's that, that, uh, Fate Electric A19, and also here's that Mercury A21, it's a 75 watt, and what's cool about this is you can take, if you, this new version, is you can go straight to here, and he also puts the links of like where it's available from, like whether it's a, a Walmart or Amazon, and he has it broken down by different countries and stuff on the left. So what's cool about it is you can just take the template and copy it, and when you go in here to configuration, and you go to configure other, and then you'll just paste it into here, and just copy and paste it over the template, and have the activate checked and hit save. And it'll automatically configure all the GPIO pins for you. So it's, it's, you can see it's a huge time saver if you've got like, this one's, this one, we'll look, we can, you can edit the template as well. But this one's got several, you can see there's the SM16716, there's the clock, there's the PWM, that's the, for the warm white, and then the power and the data for that chip. Um, and, I'll show you some other stuff here. We got time. We got other switches and stuff I've, I, I did today. So it's kind of cool. And there's a new feature that I asked Theo and I opened an issue on uh, Tasmodo and he implemented it today. And it allows you to easily like you do a two year convert and then say you've got four or five PW, say you've got some sort of LED strip that's four or five uh, PWMs and you sat and figured out which one's red, which one's green, etc. You've got a whole slew of stuff. Well, there's a way you can copy all that to the template and you just issue this command and I'll show you, I'll show you on a, I'll show you in a Node MCU that I have it flashed with and just because playing with it in case we, I bricked it for some reason. But, um, but then once you, you get your template, you can come back in here and to add new template on Black Adder's website. And he, Black Adder, if you don't know, he's kind of taken over the wiki on Tasmodo. And if you haven't recently, I know I've kind of gotten off track, but it's, if you haven't, re you haven't recently gone to the Tasmodo uh, wiki, 
and look in, like say, he's cleaned up a lot of things. Uh, the commands that I, I go to a lot is the supported commands. Um, he's cleaned it up a lot in like in table in a, a table format now. You know, like here's all your switch modes. Uh, he's got links to everything, so it's it made it a lot cleaner. Um, he's got everything's kind of laid out a little better. Um, and also he did anchors where you can just come in here and say, I want to know about the LED state. And so you, you can just put the hashtag LED state at the top and it'll jump straight to it. So whatever command you want. Um, so in this, this bulb here is... And that's pretty much it for the for these these mercury bulbs. Is you just go in here and and flash Tasmodo to it. Put make sure the dev version, copy and paste the template, and let it reboot, and it's done. Um, and now one thing I do just to test it is and I showed in my previous little smart bulb video. If you do set option seventeen in a one, I don't know if my there we go. And what that does is turn on the decimal colors. And that allows you to do like color, zero, comma, let's see, two, let's just, I'm not gonna do too bright. 20, comma, zero, comma, zero. And what this is, is it's red, green, blue, then white. Cause it's, and that's just, and it's a zero to 255. And then if you did, I'll normally we'll cycle through and we'll do and just keep moving down the line and just making sure that we've got red, green, zero, comma, zero, comma, 50, comma, zero. And then you've got blue and then we'll do 50 and then you've got regular the white. And this bulb, it's, like I say, it's more of a warm white that's on this, the, the fourth channel. And that's the mercury bulb that is. Um, and if you want a template to use, I don't know, let's see. If you want a template to use, if you go back to the Tasmodo Wiki and look at home automation software. And I, I use the manual configuration legacy. I don't normally use, and you can try it, the um, auto discovery. Let's see. This up, move me out the way a little bit here. You start watching the stream right after people comment, mind blown. Yeah, the templates are mind blowing. Um, if, if you look in the legacy, and I just normally will search for RGB, uh, wrong window, RGBW. I guess I should have just linked that, right? And there's, this is a decent little template to use inside Home Assistant. Now, if you're doing the auto discovery, that's, you know, may or may not work. I'm just not familiar. I don't use auto discovery a lot because of I'm always bringing stuff in and out. Uh, this template does work. It's for RGBW. And you'll notice the same thing. They talk about set option 17, one. And just make sure that when you go through your topic and change, because there's several of them. There's light one, light one, light one. There's several of them. And if you miss one, you'll mess up on something. And someone on Discord was saying like, well, hey, everything else works with it. I can turn it off and on. I can set the white value, the whole nine yards. But anytime I try and change the color, it doesn't work. Well, they had, some, they had deleted the slash on the RGB command near the topic by accident. So if you don't get one, just go and check. So, um, and once you do pull one in, I should have it in here somewhere. Yeah, here it is. As you get your typical uh, color wheel, 
that inside uh, Home Assistant, and you can see it does work uh, fairly well. And then it does turn the white value back down, but you can just crank, if you want the white value, you know, you can adjust that. And same thing for the brightness. I know I've got it kind of turned down for the camera. So, um, but that's the, that's the Mercury bulb. So if you got any questions on that one, that one's pretty simple to do there. You can get them locally. Um, let's see what, I mean, he, sh he should have the link to going to walmart.com. It may differ, um, of course, by your area or whatnot, but of course they're showing right now for $12.88 on Walmart for me. So uh, it's not a bad, bad bulb. Um, just keep in mind the white is a warm white if you like more of a cool white. I like more of a cool white. So, um, now the f fate, I put that one in. The fate electric one, fate. You'll notice it's going to have a little different because now it's got that this one's a little different configuration. And they also, same thing, is I would do your same like to your convert, um, get it over into Tasmoto. You will need the later dev versions as of this because the 6.4.1 does not have the driver for the SM16716 in Tasmoda. Um, under the, he does have this bulb, someone submitted it. They actually have the BR30 version and here's the A19 version. Uh, oh look, here we go. Is, there's, this is on the Amazon version. There's the Costco. They've got, and also, so they'd also gave the uh, uh, FCC uh, certification on these. Let's take a look at that. A lot of times, they, I find when they stuff has the FCC certifications, if we go to the FCC website, let's see if we can take this code out. And they, if you can find, if you find the FCC certifications, they'll, you can find the internal photos for these bulbs, which is kind of cool. You, instead of having to pop the top off, because a lot of times there's silicone on there and it's, they're tough to get back on at times. Uh, so you can see the layout on this bulb. They probably will show, here's the, here's the layout. That's, that's that SM16716 driver board. And you can see on this one, a little better on this picture, you can see the warm white and the cool white LEDs, and then these smaller ones are going to be the color ones around the size. And then that's, this, that's that Tuya uh, chip with the antenna at the very top, I bet. Let's see. If they show a better shot of it. Yeah, see that TYLCV2V? That's that Tuya module for, they use for the LED drivers. So... Um, now, one thing I like diff with this bulb, the same thing, copy and paste this into templates, boom, hit, hit um, I'm not going to do it, this one's already set up, but um, under configure other, and just copy and paste it into here, and hit activate, and boom, it reboots, and that's it. And it will set all the GPIO pins for you. Now, you notice we got PWM1 and PWM2 on this one. One big key, and I'll show you, is, is set option. You'll see they talk about it right here. Set option 37, 54. Now, remember, I mentioned this in my last video. Of course, they, they, my last video I did on smart bulbs they um, they had just added this feature the day of I was posting my video, of course. You know, that's how that works. Um, what's up, Will? So what happens is on this bulb, 
if now this one's going to be RGBWW, so there's five channels in this one. Uh, and if you do color zero comma zero, well, let's just do twenty five comma zero comma zero comma zero because there's five channels. If I got it right, yeah. So I don't know if Gumbo is in here. Gumbo actually sent me this bulb. Uh, so I was helping him out, and I think he had some extras, and he wanted me to, well, we'll share it with you guys on this, this bulb here. So immediately off the bat, you know the mapping is wrong. And to remap the channels, and it's also, I believe it does work if you're using like AI Lite and several other drivers. Um, again, if we go to the Tasmoda Wiki... And you're probably going to be another mind blown thing in probably different ways. We'll go to supported commands and uh, is it set option list? Was it 37? I think it was. Yeah, 37. 37. It's the color remapping for LED channels. Also provides an option to independent handling of RGB and white channels. So if you go to this table and, oh yeah, they do have the in, independent handling. I, have, I haven't read up on that one yet. But if you go to this one, there's all the different combinations of how your layout of the, of the different channels are. Whether it's green, then white, then you know, blue, then red, then cool white. And this like should cover like all kinds of different combinations. So, but luckily you don't have to dig through all that. It's all back here in Black Adder's site. Copy a template, go take your set option, copy it, and let's copy it to the console. And that's it. And it's remapped for you. So you can now we'll check it by doing color. We know red's right. Zero, 50, comma, zero, comma, zero, comma, zero. There's green, then color, zero comma, zero comma, what, we're gonna skip it. Too many channels on this one. 50, zero, zero. There's the blue, and then 50, and then zero. There's the, this one does have the bright white, as you can see. Zero, and then 50, and then this one also has the warm white. Um, so, Let's see. And you can, you know, you can take, this is using the GUI and you can change, you can kind of see on the camera um, on how to, you know, change the, co the color value. Now, same thing on the manual configuration, scroll down past it and they have RGBWW lights and here's the link again. Same thing, go in and set your set option 17.1. This enables decimal colors. I've already done that. Otherwise, you have to use hex with like 00, zero and FF, and it's just easier on decimal. Um, but here's your template. If you want to do manual and copy it straight into your light, yam or light yandle or YAML or the um, uh, configuration YAML, and I should have this one configured. If I have it in here, let me see. I might. Yeah, here I do. Yeah. So here's the fate one. And it's going to flip out on me because I don't have the box big enough. Paste that. You talking about Brett? Paste what in the chat? And so, same thing as the little color wheel on the, on the other ones. Once you configure it. You know, you got the colors right. And then, of course, you can 
change back to doing the just straight white or warm white or cool white. And you also do get the effects, uh, which is you got like three or four effects, which is just color, just randomly goes through the colors. So, um, again, that's the the Fate A19 bulb on Amazon, and of course they are uh, they are locally uh, at all the different Costco's and um, where's it at? One at it's like Costco, Amazon. That's a, that's all there. I guess y'all were also seeing Menards as well. So, um, so that's it on the bulbs for these two SM16716 uh, drivers. So, um, which those are pretty, pretty cool bulbs. And of course they do have their drawbacks being, you know, bulbs, but some people do prefer bulbs in some places and they, I use them in some lamps and, um, uh, I don't use them in like a hallway where I've got a light switch. I got people to turn them off. But of course, if you did, like I was talking about, um, the fate in America coming better to HA with Taz Motor for me. No, with, I'm not sure of a way, maybe some of the pros on, maybe that might take some different, the different templates to do, the custom templates inside ESP Home to actually make it come as one light. You can put them in there, but it comes up as two lights. You'll have the RGB light, and then you'll also have uh, the white light, or for this one, you have that thing they call it monochromatic light, which is, you'll have the warm white and uh, cool white. So it comes up as two different lights in Home Assistant. Um, now in Tasmoto, it's gonna come up as one. So it might just be, uh, yeah, they don't behave right, you may, that's, that's going to be an auto question in ESP home. Maybe he's got a way to, to, I know he's usually got some cool stuff to, he may have an easy way just to con convert them and, and stick them together. So let me move the bulbs out the way here. Let's see. Are your lights slowly turning on? What do you mean slowly, slowly turning on? Like the, with Tasmoda? I mean, they should come on very quick. Um, if you're having issues with them being slow, it might be some of that, due to that core version. Ah, there you go, well, Bowie, and cool white LEDs act correctly, okay. Uh, yeah, Dr. Jeff, we're gonna show that, Dr. Jeff. I wanted to do that uh, template on I got a few things from, let's see, a weird light switch, what did I say is weird, from, Edward, no, you shouldn't, shouldn't take a long time, it should be almost pretty much instantly, um, let me make this a little bigger here. That's too big. So this I got a, this light switch from from Zimmy Smart, and it is a weird switch on the size. I want to show a comparison of another switch. If I can find one in my box. Let's see. It's like I just have regular switches. I don't have any other. Here's a decor. A flux LED converted to Tasmoda. I've never been able to get the color wheel in Tasmoda. If I configure a flux LED. I'm not. What is the flux LED wheel? I haven't seen that one. Yeah, if your bulb is unresponsive, I try and set in Tasmoda. Yeah, it. Some some bulbs you can uh, config you can hook up the wires to them if you get it, some of them have the pins on top. Um, but yeah, this this is a little different compared to a regular decoya, decora. 
Magic Home LED strip driver. Um, is that like it also another, is that all through PWMs? I believe that Magic Home is. I do have one here I got from Banggood I can, I can pull up here. Um, platform flux sled. Hmm, I never used flux sled before. Not familiar with that. Um, but this little switch, I thought it was weird looking, but it does, it actually does fit in a box. Let's see. I could not, I need to move my stuff closer. And not run over my... It actually does fit in a box, in a regular uh, one gang box, but, that, but it won't fit in a two gang. Um, I thought it was kind of cool looking and we can use it as a guinea pig to do the template with. I can find my plug. One second here. So why I put these in here, I guess I'll look in. <clears throat> so just, I, you haven't, Will, you haven't tried to configure just as a regular light? Using that uh, RGBWW? Or is that RG, just RGB? This one does have screws on the back and I've got a little test. Yeah, I do have one which with a, um, yeah, RGB. I do have an RGBW, uh, the Blitzwolf LED st uh, strip that I can pull out here and we can look at it if you, if I don't forget. And I just use that same, uh, that little, same little template that for the regular RGB and did it over MQTT. And I have Tasmoto on it. It's not, it's not plugged in well though. We'll make sure it's not plugged in. Yeah, make for good television. Exactly, Brett. It'll, I'll be like that other guy uh, that's always shocking himself, almost like only on, on purpose. Yeah, this one's got regular like screws on the bottom and you just got your line and you got your two loads. They did have a three, a one gang and a three gang on this one. And then you've got your ground and your uh, neutral. I guess we will hook up, we'll hook up the ground for safety's sake, right? Some of the, a lot of these grounds, these switches, when I've opened them, they actually don't do any, they don't actually go anywhere. Uh, they'll just be dead end on the, on the board or they just be a pass through to uh, like the, the front on the, the screws on the front of the uh, the face plate. Yeah, exactly. So let me pull up. Let me find my IP of this one right quick. I'm gonna... I don't know if I named it. Uh... There we go. All right. So I've already configured this one. Now if we can see, the light on there, let me turn that, this light off. It's got two LEDs on it, which is, they're both connected together. And I got, the, I got this off of Zimmy Smart's uh, website off their AliExpress. 
and I did set these up as switches so I can do like long press and but one thing I wanted to do is that put that new feature on that that new firmware on there um, let's see We'll flash it over the air right now. We'll see if we break it, right? Let me turn this. So y'all can see. So one of the problems they had before and I'll zoom in on this, we make it a little bigger here. One of the problems I had before on submitting like the templates to the Black Adder's uh, website was once you went into, you know, configuration, you went to configure module, and this one I already figured out what the you know the LED was the switch uh, switch to relay to etc. The problem is when if you want to make a template for it to go you know submit on there is if you went to configure template you'd have to pull up two screens side by side and or you have to go back and forth and you just sometimes you get lost and all the GPIO pins and everything and what this was for was to make a the, the template. Well, because typically once you're done, if you went and you did template, and then you would take and copy this out and submit it to Black Adder's website. And that way everybody else, you know, can just copy and paste and configure all the, uh, all the things. Well, what's cool now, and Theo added this today in 6.4.120, is if you do template, 255 and what it will do it is it will automatically take all of the pins that you configured in a configure module and push it over to the template page you can see all the pin numbers have changed now there's a 52 in here now um, and it changes the name to merged but now when you go back to the configuration and you go to configure template it'll all be in here exactly uh, how you want and of course you could change you know change the name you know to like zemi uh zemi dual uh switch or something and you can save that yeah because i yeah will i was asking him you know i was like because i was trying to submit a couple of them and i was like this is a pain having to do it back and forth it's got to be it needs to be something that copies it straight over I don't think it's added to the wiki yet. Black Adder's added it yet, uh, but once you once you do it, then and it, there is a I, I went one letter too far on the switch, but once you you know copy that line out, and then we'll submit it um, to Black Adder's website. And we won't do the new template now, but it's just, he's got a little, once you did add template at the bottom left, and you can put the manufacturer model number. And I try to put, cause you know, everybody, there are all these plugs and switches and stuff. There are a lot of just resold by everybody. I try to find the model number on the back. And then I'll put in the notes, like what brand that I bought it as, and then try to find the link and then, um, the direct image link, I always end up throwing those on my GitHub because sometimes you can't direct them straight to the to vendor's website. But here's that where you'll put that template in and you'll submit it to him and he's pretty quick and he'll put them up there. And this does link the template templates from the Tasmodo Wiki as well. Um, so it kind of makes an easy one-stop shop to go grab all your stuff. Like really some huge stuff is like trying to figure out all these uh, power monitoring pins. Uh, oh, okay, Goodwill. And like trying to find all the power monitoring pins, you know, like um, I know I've seen some people doing these it, and you can just copy and paste it and do the power monitoring without having to try to figure it out. Oh, cool deal, Will. Um, 
So I really like that. It makes it super simple once you do the two you convert. Cause I haven't, I think there's some kind of brand new switches and brings it right over. And like I said, I did these as switches cause I wanted to do the long press. And these are just like regular, like little toggles. They, they, I think you can kind of see in the, uh, in the camera, they're regular little toggles. You push them in there. They're kind of at an angle. And like, I know they looked like, like I was saying, some Australian switches. And I did make sure that I was like, well, I get the wrong switch, but no, it's it actually is listed as the U S switch. And, uh, but it's a cool little switch. Um, The, I kind of had, what's the difference between 255 and zero? Got a link for this. Oh yeah, there you go. Um, the template zero, I think that shows what's in the, what's in the temp. Um, yeah, that was a two year convert switch as well. Um, I don't know if they have this on their store yet. I'm not a big fan of these glass switches. Um, some of them don't hold themselves in the wall really well. Uh, let's see. I don't see. I don't see those switches. So let me go this. I, I found them on AliExpress. They had uh, the Zimmy Smart. And it was these right here. Yeah, one, I think if, if you do template zero, that's going to show the template as which template as you did template zero, that's actually going to show what's configured as zero. And I don't have one configured for here. Um, Cause once you do paste that in, I'll show you right. Well, we made our own template, right? Let's see. Console. Yeah. If you do template, Oh, look, I did wipe it out, right? Configure module. There it is there. And then configure template. It's blank. Probably because I rebooted the switch. But then we'll do template 255. <clears throat> and we'll paste this one in. I just, might, well, we'll show you, right? So if you had like a new one, you pulled it from the template. Just go to configure other. Look, it's already, you'll copy it here and then do an activate and then save it. And it's going to reboot the switch or bulb or device or whatever it is. Um, and you'll notice now under configure module, you'll have module zero. We lost the stream for, or maybe you did. I didn't see, it's still showing green here. Will. Um, you'll have module zero. So, I bet you if you went back in here and did a template zero, it's going to show what the template is. And I think if you probably did like template one, that might be like the Sonoff basic. See, it's just going to keep spitting out the various um, switches and everything. Oh, look, it's done. It changed my template over to it. Template it actually changes your template over to it. So that's not a good thing to do, right? I got. Configure template. We don't want to sign off basic. We want template zero. Hey, what's up, Jim? I didn't see you in there earlier. Um, so that's the th this is that's that switch here, and I, I this is just that two gang version. That two gang version. That was kind of a cool little switch. Um, they all, I also got the, which I've shown before. Let me, 
let's turn unplug this so we don't shock ourselves, right? Also, I, you've, I've shown this dimmer before. It's a regular Tuya dimmer. It's got the little eight segment on there. Um, I noticed they changed, they must have changed the firmware, and it's not the firmware of the ESP8266, it's the firmware on the actual, there's actual dimming. I noticed now when the light is off, the little green segmented display is zero. I thought it was broke at first. And um, it goes, it goes dim. Now, one thing, Mike, I know about, about those switches is I've always looked for a two or three, and I won't use the term that they mess up all the time because they'll call it two gang and three gang. It's a single gang switch, but with two or three switches in it. The only ones you can really find are those glass plate ones. And I just don't like them too much because they just snap into the wall. And that's just a, me, that's an accident waiting to happen. They pop out of the wall and you got live wires. Uh, this one actually does have the screw the screw holes to hold it in the wall so which is good um but this i noticed one thing on this dimmer it actually uh it, when you turn it on it like counts up so they changed the actual firmware on these um and that was it on and those are i did all those with with two with two year convert those were all off of uh the zimmy smart um they the Zimmy Smart, I know it was in here somewhere when I found it. Um, let's see, switches. I'm sure we can find the dimmer, right? That would probably have to be somebody else. Will I? I yeah, here's the here's that 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 dimmer, and you know it's they're showing it's twenty at this time, right? Twenty seven dollars. Um, it depends on if you like the look of it. Yeah, and it I the Zimmy Smart's got cool. I like the down lights. I did that down light video on it. It was pretty cool. Uh, we did a I haven't done the video on actual the installation on it yet. Uh, but I've got six Zimmy lights in a living room that we at another house that we configured with uh, two dimmers, and the dimmers are in a they're not in a true three way configuration, but they work as a three way configuration. And then you can work the dimmers on the wall, and they stay in sync and control the, all the six uh, down lights in uh, in a group. So it's I'll try to share that one. It's pretty cool looking. Um, but let's see what else here. What else I wanted to show? Um, I got a whole pile of stuff that I haven't been going through lately. <coughs> um, and I know Dr. Jeff, I want to show, we want to do that no red thing. Um, oh, the, this one was kind of cool, which I did talk about the, this is, I got this from uh, Banggood. I know Doc's always talking about Banggood and everything. This is a Blitzwolf LED strip. I know you've probably seen some of the Blitzwolf like plugs and stuff like that. Um, yeah, Hugh, I'll, I'll uh, show it. It's a, there's a lot of rules to it because I had to keep the the states in sync because I wanted I was picky. I wanted to have the lights, and they're using Martin Jerry dimmers, and I wanted the uh, the the lights to stay in sync where you, there's five status lights on the dimmers, and it's all done through using MQTT and all rules. Uh, I didn't do any automations in Home Assistant for it in or Node Red for it, so. Um, let's see, I want to say strip, um, I can call it blitz, yeah. I did submit this one. Yeah, Jim, we did talk about that, and I, I did a couple already, <clears throat> to, um, but I did not 
let them up. I did not com, uh, add them to the Smart Life app and let them upgrade. Um, so I've got another switch coming. Hope maybe it'll be a Sunday or Monday. I want to see if I can do that one, and I'm gonna try to let it upgrade. You know, and we'll see if we can take it back and forth. Hopefully, I'll have an upgrade to it 1.05 and see what happens. Uh, yeah, exactly. You're fine with old stock, but. And I kind of figured that was going to happen, and hopefully, you know, it's it'll, it'll depends on how quick we can get through the stock. So, um, but this was that Blitz uh, uh, LED strip, and I put Tasmoto on it as well. I did submit the template for it, and it is kind of like what Will you were talking about. Now this one's a four channel. Which I, it was kind of kind of cool. I'll put this one. I'm gonna install this one. I just don't not sure where yet. It does have one button, and uh, it's got a cool white along with an RGB in the the LED strip. And I did get that from Banggood Blitz Wolf. LED strip. Yeah, this one here. <clears throat> and they've got they they they've got the the several different sizes. Plus they've got the EU plugs. Uh, they got the five meter. They got the two meter. Um, and I know you can I you could do some some stuff you know cheaper you know through DIY or whatever. But this is kind of already ready to go for you. And it does come with a uh, pretty beefy uh, power supply, I guess, because they're doing that five meter and it's got multiple <clears throat> LEDs. Um, let's see. And this one's just four, four PWMs and kind of the same, the same thing. And you can have both. And it's kind of hard to see on the camera here, but uh, let's see, 20, zero, zero. You can have the separate, the, the cool white channel going as well. And use that same, I use that same template and it goes right in using that, that same template we, were, we used earlier with the RGBW for the mercury bulb. So, yeah, I'm, I'll tell you, I'm spoiled by the, the two-year convert process. It, like... It's so quick now that I can just, I'll plug in that Raspberry Pi, let it boot, go in there, boom, connect the phone, you're doing, I, it, it takes minutes per plug. And it's, it, in some ways I do kind of miss the soldering, but uh, in other ways I don't. But um, there was another, let's see, some other stuff I, I, I picked up while I was there. It from which I know I talked about in one stream was which I don't have it hooked up right now was a yeah especially on the plugs I picked up a a, a strip of for my ESP32 project of cool white and just and warm white. I'm not too much on the color things at times. I normally just want to be able to change the color temperature, you know, from white to uh, warm white to cool white. And this was a long LED strip that I got from uh, Banggood along with, of course, ESP32 to control it. And a couple, I got a couple buck converters and whatnot for that project, which I'll end up doing. So, uh, but I, I, I wanted to do just the, the cool white and warm white on there. So, so that's kind of my whole mess of stuff. Let's try the mock, prox mox. Uh, all right, Hugh. Back to the ER at 6 a.m. I'm, I'm, assume, I'm hoping that meeting you, you, you work there and not a, a planned visit to the ER or unplanned visit. Um, <clears throat> Good deal. I um, appreciate you stopping by. So, trying to think what else we y'all we wanted to do. Uh, kind of open open from there. Just 
cover a few things on doing the Tasmoda uh, templates and whatnot. And uh, I did, I did submit that little LED strip to Black Adder's website. And I will do those other switches that I I did that little two two gang switch. But I did. I think he put that LED strip. Yeah, here, here he put it right here, and he listed as global because it has the EU plug as well, and uh, so you can just copy and paste in this uh, template and bring it right into Tasmodo. So, Node Red, there you go. Let me see. Let me drag. Let's see, Node Red. Let me find my link. Now, if I can remember how I did this. Someone said there's a new two year, won't work. No, just a hobby. I haven't, we, we haven't confirmed that yet. Um, we were talking about that a minute ago. And I do, I, I do have a, a, another switch coming that I can try out. Plus, I do have the firmware on another one I could flash. But I don't know if that firmware is going to have the update. They're saying if it's, you go to a 1.05, then it, will, it won't work with till you convert. So I guess that means, you know, go out and go buy your bulbs and plugs now. The switches are fairly easy to do, of course, if you can solder. So... Um, How do we know? I guess it would be try to your convert. Cause I'm not sure if it tells you, I'm not sure if it tells you if you pair it, I don't think it gives you the option of upgrading. It checks for the upgrade and just says, you can just click okay, I believe. And I think it kind of forces you to upgrade the firmware on them. So the humidity is here. This is kind of my bathroom setup here. Uh, let me drag this out the way here. Like I say, this is a, I want to kind of rework this because some of this, I did this pre-rule and what this does, yeah, is there, it uses MQTT because I, you know, it use, does use ESP Home, and as I just read the ESP Home, it reads every uh, thirty seconds from a BME two hundred and eighty in the bathroom, and so on this topic, I get a no, that's not the topic. That's motion. I'm my bad. No, it does read home assistant. Okay, see, I had to figure this out when I did this one. The delta really I do on it is really, it's, it's nothing more than if I see it above, yeah, if it's greater than, eight, greater than or equal to 85 or less than 85. And it checks, yeah, it checks the bathroom, the bathroom, uh, since the bathroom humidity. Let me look through this real quick here. This may not be the one. This, this is, oh, this is the, um, this is where it's checking the humidity. This is the little different rule. Sorry about this. I remember what this part is. This is the, this is the motion lights in there. And what it does is the, is this, holds the light on if the humidity is high. So basically what that is, is when you walk in the bathroom, the light will turn on for three minutes. Well, then once you start the shower and it kicks the humidity up, then it'll hold that motion light on for me while the humidity is up. So I don't, so I don't have to turn, you know, be bothered with turning on the light switch. Um, let's see. Um, Here's the humidity. Uh, 
I better make sure my wife didn't. Use. Yeah, exactly. Um, the this is the humidity that reads, and I did do a little different messing with it. Where I know the tag says eighty five. Is I say greater than or equal to ninety. If I put them on the right on the edge, it kind of would rock back and forth, and it would turn on for you know, run for a little bit and then cut off. So what I'd found is I said greater than or equal to ninety, it would turn on. Well, then once it fell below 85, then it would turn off. Well, then say if it happened to rock back up to 88% humidity or 89, well, then it's not going to turn back on because it has to come back into 90 to meet that threshold. That's kind of what I use as the delta. It's just kind of a poor man's way of, you know, so you can get that get rock back and forth. And... I just have it go in here and say, is the vent already on? I check to see if we're home. And then it does a change payload of on and then does an MQTT publish to my uh, Sonoff Dual. Uh, yeah, Sonoff Master Bath, which is Power 2, and turns that on. Um, then it's a little different on the off because I have an override button on the, on the wall. So that way, because I, I, I ran into a situation where, of course, if you're in there not using the, uh, the shower, but you want the vent on, well, it was, ever, it was gonna continue to cut off the vent once you turned it on. So once you push the button, you put it in a, man, that sets a state of manual override and it won't turn the vent back off if the humidity falls below. And you, the user actually has to turn the uh, vent back off. That's kind of the cheap little way I did that. Um, this actually isn't used anymore. It's when I was using, I had Tasmodo on, the, uh, on my little sensor in there. Yeah, there you go, the dump button, right? Um, one thing I do want to add is I want to add on the manual override is where if you do a long press on manual override where it'll set a timer for like 10 minutes or something and then it'll turn that manual over. So like if you were going to leave, you could just do a tap and hold and then 10 minutes after it cut the vent off for you. So there you go, manual 25 minutes for X. <clears throat> So that's that. Um, what else? Um, I know we've been going along here for an hour and 12 so far. Um, I know one thing. Uh, let's see. Let me clear this out the way. Doc was talking. We, they, they, they made a new, on Discord, a new uh, camera channel. And although that's kind of a hot topic with a lot of people are doing the <clears throat> doing the cameras. Um, and move all these switches and bulbs and everything out the way here. And my creaky chair is Do. All right. So, one thing I know several of us were talking about was the uh, power over power over Ethernet cameras, and I haven't installed this one yet. But it seemed I got these. They weren't too bad. There was the uh, and I, I prefer doing the power over Ethernet cameras, and these are the. The, the, I don't know if you ever, everybody's ever used the Rio Link ones. And you, you can power it using, you know, your standard, um, I forgot what size is that. It's like a 3.5, 3 I forgot what size that is. They, it's one of the standard size they use for 12 volt on the cameras, uh, barrel connector. And then you do have, this is a little reset button. And then you've got, um, RJ45, of course, and they do give you a weather tight cap on it. And <clears throat> but one huge thing is they is it's power over Ethernet. And I don't know why the big drive 
which there's another camera that I have here is, I don't know, see if anybody can catch the name here. I thought it was kind of funny when I finally figured out what they were trying to be cute with the name. Um, but it, they should have been, they should have been better with the name and put a small I in front of it. I don't know if you can read it on there. Um, let me zoom in. Let me, uh, yeah, exactly. Will be watching. And I thought it was kind of funny. And because I was like, be walking or something or, um, but they, sh they, they totally missed the boat on it. They should have put us like with all the other devices out there, they should have put a small I in front of it. Right. And they could call it, I be watching. I mean, that would just totally sold it for you. Right. Um, Exactly. But there's no, but the one thing, this camera, there's, there, you have to power, it's a Wi-Fi camera. You can power, do it over Ethernet. And uh, yeah, you think, I, you think I, uh, Apple has the I be watching trademarked or something? Probably so, right? Um, the, the real links, but there's no, P, uh, no PoE. I didn't like, it didn't have the, the, the PoE on it. Let me see. Um, this one, they have a five megapixel and a four megapixel. And I, I liked this one. And this is the five megapixel I'm showing. Um, it's a five megapixel real link. But the cool thing about it, and I don't know if anybody, if everybody's familiar with it. Let me see if we can zoom up here. We get the cam my little camera lens to stop shaking. Is PoE switches are fairly cheap. You can get a little eight port PoE switch. This is a little TP Link uh, PoE switch, and it only, it only has PoE on four of the ports. And but I think this I got this several years ago. I want to say it was like like around forty dollars or something. And if you look, they got several of them out there. Um, but it's what's cool about it is you just run RJ45, one, e one Ethernet to the camera, and we'll fire this one up here. And you'll see on here, we've got the uplink light. I've got this hooked to Ethernet. And just by plugging in on one of the PoE ports, I know everybody's familiar with PoE, so it might be bored, some of them. And you can see automatically it shows PoE and it shows activity, and it's it's gonna it's negotiating right now. Just rebooted, and this camera starts up, and but it's cool. You just run one RJ45, and you can run it. The was it, I think it's like 100 meters, 300 feet or so on RJ45, and. Yeah, I don't get, Chris, why would you put Ethernet on a camera and just make it Wi-Fi only? And Ash, I'll get back to your question here. Um, yeah, you can, like, Jim, you, we, I installed uh, four or five of the, the, there were previous cameras or Hikvisions, but they're also PoE. And it's just super simple to install. You run, now I know I don't have basements here and this house, the house we were installing didn't have a second story, so it was super simple. We stuck them in the eaves of the houses of the house and drilled holes, ran them back up in the attic and ran it down to the center of the house where we had the networking cabinet. Um, be watching Ming's Garden, German. Huh, okay. Learn something new every day, Michael. Um, but the, and I, I, I bought these Rio Link. I bought two of them. They were, they had a lightning deal on them a couple months ago. Uh, I think they were only like $10 off, but it's a cheap camera. And, but I, I liked it because of a couple things. Let me find, and I'll bring the little, I, I like the GUI of, um, let's see. Give me one second here, I gotta find the IP address of it. I always wanna see the, that's the one thing I find on some of these cameras. It, it, you know, you look at, there's so many cameras out there on, to dig around. I want to see the GUI of it. Does it work with RTSP? Does it does it work with uh, you know Blue Iris? Um, 
you know, how do, does it have a SD card in it? Can you put an SD card in it for like local stuff? Um, let's see. Um, web. And I just have, this one's just set up default right now. And we'll do clear on it, get the best picture on it, right? So it's, this is the five megapixel one. Um, but it's got, but one thing I liked about it, and Chris, I haven't, yeah, I haven't messed with the, I've heard good things about the Ubiquiti cameras. Yeah, 5.5 millimeter, okay. Yeah, I know it's kind of, they use kind of a standard a lot of the cameras, and it's a, tw a lot of the cameras will use 12 volt. Um, but, I want to use power over Ethernet. Let me make this a little smaller so you can see the whole display. And Real Link didn't send these to me or anything. Like I say, I bought these off a lightning deal. And I just thought they were kind of cool. Because one big thing, it does it does use flash for the GUI, but so a lot of the cameras make you install some weird application or plugin that only works with uh, uh, like Internet Explorer. It won't work with Chrome. It won't work with Firefox. Well, the real links just work. And it, of course, it does. This, this one does have an SD card slot on the top of it. And this, like I say, this one's a five megapixel. And we can jump through the settings real quick is you can change the on-screen display. You can change, there's the recording, the encode. This is just H.264, but you can change the resolution, um, what resolution you want, the profile, the bit rate, you get the fluent stream, um, your typical stuff. How you want to record all the time, you want it motion, um, the alarms, you can set the mo the how you know the, the detection and the motion, you know, the same type stuff where you can come in here and say, hey, I only want the certain areas selected um, for, you know, if I just want to do this area or if you want to isolate it or whatnot. Same deal, we're familiar with all the other cameras. Um, um, but it's kind of your tip. Now, one thing I did find weird, I, I because this camera is not mounted on an Eve, and I, right now it's just on the desk, and it was upside down. I was like, I looked, dug through here and dug through here to find the display settings. Those are all, you got to go back to the preview on these real links. And if you look in basic settings, you've, you've got a lot of the same settings. You've got image, and there's, there's the rotation. And I was, so it took me a little bit to find because uh, it comes default, of course, like this. And I want it like that. Oh, so they do use PO passive PoE. Uh, they started selling with the AF part number. I was, that's the ubiquity ones. Because I always want to, I want to use the AF. Um, that looks like the Amcrest. And you can do the mirror. And of course, you can change everything and change the encoding. They got advanced settings anti-flicker exposure, white balance, day, night, etc. One thing I haven't done yet when I, with these cameras, I haven't brought it outside. Uh, and like a lot of times I'll stick it out in my back patio where it's completely dark and turn the light off back there. I want to kind of see the range on it. Um, so yeah, that's good that they're moving. I, I noticed with a, a lot of the ubiquity access points, some of the previous ones they were using passive. Uh, that 24 volt passive PoE, but like I have the AC versions and they're used at 802.3 AF and I've got two of the uh, regular access points and I just use it through a straight uh, Netgear uh, 24 port PoE switch that I have. So, uh, <clears throat> passive I believe just, it just pumps out 24 volts and with DC of course you're going to get a drop, but I think it's trying, probably trying to use, and someone can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, it's in hopes of that voltage getting there. With the 802.3, there's AF and there's the newer AT. 
the ATs at a higher wattage, that AF is, in essence, is what it does is um, it sends the voltage over there, but it's kind of a, a negotiation from what I've read where if that camera says, hey, I'm not getting enough voltage, it negotiates and says, hey, send me a little more volts. And because it may, you know, with DC volt, and you've got like a 200 foot cable, then that voltage may drop, you know, have a two or three volt drop. Well, then it negotiates and gets exactly, hey, I need my 12 volts. And so it's, it knows, it, it talks to it and send, says, hey, switch, send me some more juice, basically. So that's what the active uh, uh, PoE is. There you go, offset for voltage drops. So you can say it quicker than my rambling. So... Um, but the real links were cool. I, I was able to put it straight into uh, Blue Iris. Um, I'm just t playing around with Blue Iris right now. And they do work also. I found the real links had um, pretty decent support as well with a lot of little guides. Like they were talking about how to live view real link cameras via, via VLC media player which they show you exactly how to do it. And here's the RTP, RTSP stream. And what you should be, and I haven't done it yet, you should be able to put that into uh, Home Assistant. And they also had, I found in another little support article, they had uh, the, you can do for pulling the high quality and low quality JPEGs. So if you wanna do like little snapshots uh, for like notifications or just something on the Home Assistant uh, dashboard, you can pull it straight from the cameras. So, but that's the PoE style. I like the PoE. It just makes it really simple. And if if you can run, if you can run Ethernet, go find get an active PoE. Um, get. It. I don't know if you can see. Let's let's be backwards, right? Got a little delay, but it's not too bad. And Real Link's got several different um, types of of cameras. They've got like the bullet cameras. These are the little the little domes. Um, just ex different ones you want. So, so I've been going on for about an hour and a half. I know I had to circle back to one of Ash's questions. S Sewn off basic. Has motor question. It's possible to completely unlink the PIR sensor controlling le relay even when MQTT is disconnected. <clears throat> so for that one, you have a PIR probably wanting to control the switch, like say doing a uh, timer. What I would suggest is if you, I'll link it here. If you go look at, if you put a rule on the the switch for the PIR, and you can have it now. I'm finding the link here for you. Go back and look at my motion sensor night light video, and I go over some of the rules. And that will once you put a rule in, uh, once you put a rule in for that 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 switch, then it will decouple it. And with that. That switch, the switch topic, Jim, if you do a rule, you need to have switch topic set to zero. Because according, if you go look at the wiki on that, they, if anytime if you do the switch topics, it kind of bypasses the rule engine. Um, but once you put a rule on there and steal the state of that PIR sensor, it won't be, it won't, it will stop clicking the relay on and off. I know because they probably tied it to like switch two and it, it's going to continue to turn it right off and on. But if you look at that video and go through, I do one uh, with doing some nightlight videos, uh, nightlight LEDs on there, but you should be able to adapt to doing it with a uh, regular sun off basic. So the read switch will act like a switch and try to control the door even for dress. Yeah, but once you put if you put it as sw switch two, and then you put a rule, even you did like a rule and said, hey, on switch two state, publish, I know you said didn't know MQTT, but if you <clears throat> set it to uh, some other command, as soon as you activate that rule where it's uh, taking switch two and doing something with it, it decouples it from uh, 
changing the relay. Because then actually if you want it to do the relay, then you have to do it in a rule to actually turn off the power on something or, or you know, whatever type of relay or MQTT or command or whatever you want to do with that switch two. So just decouple it using the, using the rule for switch two. And again, you do need to use switch topic zero, which is default. So if you've messed around with doing switch topics, you need to, change, you need to get rid of the switch topics. So, so what else, before I have to jet here, what else we got going on? Any other questions? Um, I know <clears throat> we've always got Tasmoda questions and it's kind of where I like to, I kind of stay abreast of that project and doing the ESP home as well. So, and I know I get that effects working for for the mighty I don't know if you did have missed it for new working light the for in Tasmoda they do have the if, if that on that on that fate light and the uh, that mercury light you can do the effects where it just toggles back the different colors um, oh on the RF bridge build more rules. I'll, I'll check that out, Chris. I'll make a note of that. Um, <clears throat> formatting for the string, probably for string. You should be it, in that template. It had the. Oh, I disconnected my bulb, but let's see. Home automation software, legacy, and it has a few of them. Yeah, see, well, that's the 28th. Here's RGBW. You're going to get a few effects, and it should it should build the drop down in Home Assistant when you paste this one in. Um, with RGB, let's see. RGB, you should have you should get the same thing, zero, one, two, three, and four. And you have to go down and pick it, and it, as long as it's on, it will change uh, to be on there. Just don't know how to customize. What do you mean customizing, Will? Um, you can't really change the that's the built the built-in effects. So it's just gonna cycle through the colors. They're built-in effects of Tasmoda. Yeah, they're they're hard-coded effects. They are. Um, I don't know if they have an effects. I think they do. Uh, so effects. Let's see. Effects. Yeah. See, here's the effects, the schemes. If you do a, it's it sends a scheme over. And there's a there's like a wake up and it, like I think it cycles through them real quick. There's cycle up, there's cycle down, and then random cycle. That's all you're gonna get with the RGB and RGBW and the WW. It's like I'm spitting out some WWE stuff, right? These are the the NeoPixel stuff, so you won't have those. Um, but you can change the speed and the fade uh, options on here, and that's just gonna be those hard coded schemes. If you wanted to go something further, you'd have to probably do some sort of custom little animation or something in like Node Red or some automation in Home Assistant where you were sending various color commands based on timing, uh, which you know you could you could do that as well. Just it would take a little bit of thought for that. Where if you, you know you wanted something to flicker back from red to green and red to green for so many seconds or something. Um, so those are just going to cycle through. But template was wrong. No equals new, your info result. Okay, cool. All right, well, good deal. <clears throat> yeah, that little template that's in there, um, they have the RGB one, RGBW, and RGBWW. Um, yeah, I guess you could do that. You could do make a custom build. I haven't dug into the effects of code. 
I'm sure like many of the other code, the code for in Tasmoto that Theo's done, it's probably very tightly written uh, uh, for loop of some sort. It may make go make your be mind be blown when you look at it as a term again, right? So, um, but if you end up programming Arduino, you can also do that yourself. So, um, what else do we have? I think that was about all I was thinking about trying to cover, and we covered a little more than that. Um, wasn't planning to do the camera thing, but that was kind of cool. Um, any, let's see, any dimmer questions or anything? Let's see, Wiki says to use this rule, but it turns off relay if it's on with MQTT. <clears throat> do publish your custom switch topic. If you did something, now your PIR ash is set probably to switch to. So if you did like a rule one on switch two uh, state. Oh yes, yeah, switch. Oh, you're doing switch one. So switch one state. And you say you're not have using not not using MQTT. Okay, so I was trying to do an example of publishing the. M you could really just do. I know this is probably going to look look somewhat. No, once you do, uh, you could have. Say you had a PWM on it. You could do do dimmer plus end on. Let's see. Well, let's. Switch state equals, let's just say to do I, we'll just make it send out the IP address. How about that? I know it probably looks silly, but um, it should work as a rule. <clears throat> it's, if you put that rule in on a, and, and then if you activated it with like rule one, one, or rule one on, as soon as you put that in, it's going to decouple switch one. And if any time the state is going to change, I know it's a silly rule, but it's one of an example. It's going to do the command IP address. And so you'll just see in the console every time PIR is triggered, it's going to show the IP address in the console. And it won't trigger the relay. Because once you've stolen the com what it does from it, then it's not going to do it. So if once you do you take away a switch from actually doing something if you want to do in a rule then you actually have to make that rule uh do that power command for the the relay if you actually want to tr uh, trigger it so but again make sure your switch topic is set to zero but in the rule you can do anything you want so when you say rule one on switch one state and if, and if you look in the rules section uh, there's a bunch of examples. And that one, I, I said whatever state. So there's like state one and state, state one would be on and then state uh, two, or state zero would be off. But the rules section, the rules wiki, it's I know it's a little daunting at first, but if you scroll past a lot of the intro and they have a lot of examples of like, Here's one like with timers, which is like a simple staircase timer. And they explain like how to do a, you know, a timer like for like doing a staircase where if you go down the stairs, it turns the light on for so long. And then once you're out of the stairs, it turns the light off. Um, and it's all contained in the switch. But there's tons of different examples um, in, the, in the wiki. And they usually explain, and people are adding stuff in here all the time. Um, there's, there's, uh, right now, there's I have some of them I haven't seen. There's 22 examples of doing the rules. And a lot of them you can just take and adapt to what your needs are. And so um, the rules are very powerful. And I did see they did have a pull request, which is a feature I've been really looking for. And they haven't implemented it yet. It's supporting the if command in the rules. That's going to be cool. Is that way you can do, I've always wanted to do an if command um, in the rules to where you could kind of branch off and do an if, else if, or an else uh, in 
do also they supports multiple commands, support nested if statements, etc. So I thought this would be kind of cool. Um, can definitely get out of hand, but um, handling them, but it should be pretty cool once they get this implemented in the pull request. So long awaited feature. Um, all right, everybody. Well, I'm got some other things to do, and it's late uh, my time, so I will hang out here for a couple more minutes, and we'll see if there's any other questions. And Francois, that's why why will you use Tasmoto over ESP Home? Get that question a lot. Uh, people, always, well, which one's better? Well, I, I, that depends. There's so many a lot of different questions. Um, ESP Home, I think, is great for some of the, which I'm going to do a video on uh, the Lojas bulbs because they're a little different. They, I can't get, they won't work exactly right with Tasmodo. Uh, but I, I like some of the bulb stuff for um, ESP Home and sometimes for Tasmodo, it just depends. Um, and, but for like sensors, I, the, the sensors sometimes are a lot easier to do in ESP Home, uh, which I showed in that, that, that sensor video where we kind of kind of rebuilt the brush sensor a little bit with a little twist with I2C and that 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 NeoPixel. That was a little easier to build. You could have done it with Tasmoto as well. Now I'll say the with with Tasmoto, I like the console. For the switches and being able to throw in my rules real quick and it's just easy for the switches i can just send the bin file to it pick my command and i don't have to go set up any yaml or anything like that and boom it's done and now i know it's a little different it's centered a little different is i like esp home has that api which is really cool because it links straight into home home assistant but i I don't use Home Assistant really as kind of like the center hub of my home automation. MQTT kind of lives in the middle because I use some, the, some of the switches will talk to other switches through MQTT and not even bother with sending anything through Home Assistant. So in same thing that Node Red, where I have Node Red will do a hand, handle a lot of automations and I could even have and some of the, a lot of the automations will work in my home with Home Assistant turned off. Um, and I, so I do run it in a Docker container. MQTT is still running and a lot of things would be fine. So I could have home assistant crashed and I may not even notice for several hours because my stuff with my long press switches are working because MQTT is still working. Now, if I did it all through the API, then of course some of that would stop working. So I kind of prefer to use MQTT. So for my switches, I'm probably going to stay on Tasmoto for the time being just because of the simplicity's sake. Uh, with a, you know, because a lot of switches, it's just one button, it's, uh, you know, one relay on and off, and that's it. Um, but for sensors, I probably will a lot of times use the ESP Home. Like, for instance, uh, like that with that BME 280 sensor. It's kind of touchy with how quickly you pull it. Well, it's very simple to say, hey, only pull this 30, every 30 seconds in ESP Home. Uh, with Tasmoto, it continues to pull it. I don't know if that's, that adds to the heat of it. And so I kind of prefer to use that in ESP Home, which I use ESP Home for the, my um, sensor that's in the ceiling of my bathroom that has a BME 280 and a PIR sensor. And it, some people say it does work a little quicker, um, which... Uh, for a motion light in the bathroom, I do want it to be quicker. So, um, yeah, and you can do the automations without HA. And, <clears throat> but I guess I've done a lot of the automations through the rules and I just find it easier to kind of bang them out and not have to compile anything or reflash it and just kind of, I can go in. It's, it's I don't know, the, the rules in the console is kind of like it, it, um, it's the solution to ADD of being able to go and change something in two seconds. And I don't have to open up. I can change it on my phone. You know, I can just pull up my phone and I'm going to sit on the couch, change a rule and be done. ESP Home may be a little more involved to do that for me. Um, so there's not really, try both. Is, and I've done that myself and some things I like it better for ESP Home and some I like it for Tasmodo. Try both. 
build things with both and find out what's the best for you and what's the best solution. Because uh, they both have their weaknesses and strengths for doing a home automation. It's kind of cool that we have both to pick and choose from. And also, you and I, I, I don't use it much. Some people do use it. There's that e, there's ESP, if I'm saying it right, ESPurna, or Pure, I forget how, how you say the ESP, U-R-N-A, and then there's also ESP Easy, which does a lot of sensors as well. So there's, there, and there's probably a couple others in there. ES, ESPurna, um, I just think they like to name stuff funny just to mess with me and hear me mess it up on the stream. I think that's really what the case is, all these weird names. But, so there's a ton of different firmware that for the ESP8266. Um, S, S Purina, okay. Oh, okay, I get it, I see now. There you go. I probably won't remember and I'll keep saying it. It's like everybody picks on me about calling it uh, Tasmoto, kind of like Moto. But it's Tasmota, I guess Tasmota with the A, but it's just so much easier to say. But it's like everybody else calls the uh, uh, the Sonoff, Sonoff, but it's actually S on off. But uh, that's that's just hard to say is S on off. That just sounds weird to me. Um, I guess that's what they're saying, smart on off. Yeah, Mike, uh, Tasmota for switches, ESP for sensors and LED, LEDs. That's I like to do that. Uh, that's kind of where I'm at with that. Um, it's I like I like being able to do the sensors and stuff with uh, um, ESP Home. So that was a long ramble ramble there, Fran Francois. But um, but yeah, okay. And see, you, there you are, Mike, with that weird name. And I, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce it in Discord. <laughs> I think, see, y'all are all messing with me. Y'all just trying to do my Southern draw here, and mess with me on names. Um, but if you any got, got any more other questions, hurry up and throw them out here. And confuse. Oh, look, see, I never saw that confusion. Noise of knock. Okay, I'll remember that now. Confusion backwards. I like that. So, uh, no, no cool HA six, uh, Commodore 64 shirts or anything like that. This, this stream is just my, my, uh, anti I'm offended shirt, uh, that I've worn for a while. So, uh, I get a lot of comments on that cause everybody's offended about everything these days. It seems right. But that's enough. I'll, that I'll say on that subject. <laughs> Better wash it. Actually, I think that's the green screen doing that, and it's it looks like it's crawling, and uh, it's so it's it looks like there's probably a lot of lint on it, but I think it's because the light, uh, the lighting on the on the from the green screen doing that. So, uh, well, I appreciate the. Let's see. Appreciate the watch and everything, and the green lint could be my glasses. And y'all take care and have a good evening. Appreciate y'all hanging around for the rambling. <laughs>